lighthouse. Here's the helicopter pattern. I just thought, what a beautiful graphic design that is, that rarely you would get to see it from the ground level there, that just that beautiful H in the landscape. And then I tried to think about how I feel. And this is my niece. Um, uh, and she's balancing between these two things. And that's very much how I feel a lot, because I'm teaching and I'm practicing. And I'm trying to do both very well. Both things are uh, mutually dependent, I think. My, my teaching makes my practice better. Uh, my practice makes my teaching better. But it, it is this precarious balance that uh, practicing educators uh, uh, exist within because you have half a day and then you go up to the studio and you need to be on. And so that's this kind of feeling that uh, Carolyn was making me think about here. And then just some views into the landscape around the house that I grew up in. Uh, in this beautiful swamp uh, looking over toward the vineyards. The vineyards out on Long Island are, are beautiful. They used to be potato farms and thankfully uh, the vinters came in about 15 years ago and have created on the whole North Fork. If you go out there, it's, this is what it looks like in the spring. And I thought that in a lot of ways that I missed the water, you know, that the water was so important to me. And living in Atlanta has um, pulled me away from the water. So the feeling in, in my mind as I was trying to describe who, who I am, I, f I felt like I need to somehow connect with the water again. And so that's why I brought these few images right here. This was the view out my bedroom window. And this was exploring down through that um, area uh, on the edge of Peconic Bay and Long Island Sound. And then architecture, how effortless and how the vernacular uh, architecture on Long Island frames different uh, distinct views, but how it almost grows up out of the landscape. It, it's so much a part of the landscape in both its utilitarian use and its sculptural presence. So how did I get into architecture? What happened was it actually was part of this building that um, led me into architecture. When I was at a high school career day, about the year that I did that drawing of the, my house, I went to uh, Martin Luther King High School. And I signed up for a breakout session, and I didn't know who uh, the breakout session was going to be led by, but I knew that the man looked kind of strange. And uh, he was wearing a white suit and a red bow tie. And I went in there, and there were about seven other students, and it was Richard Meyer. And I didn't know. I thought, he looks kind of like Colonel Sanders. And I thought, you know, what is he talking about, you know? Um, uh, because I didn't really know what architecture was. But after his presentation, he was presenting his design for the High Museum to us. We were so fortunate to have him there. Um, and then he started to talk about his private uh, residences that he was working on. And I went up to him afterwards, and I said, where would you go to architecture school? And he said, Mississippi State. So the next day, I put together an application, and I started getting ready to go to Mississippi, and that's what happened. Now, I didn't know that in my class, William Faulkner's nephew would be there, or that I would live next door to Eudora Welty, you know? Those things were just magical, you know, things that just happened in my life. But this day, I went to um, a review at Princeton. Um, this was my professor, David Biggie, and there were three architects on his jury. Imagine this kind of dream team jury, um, Peter Eisenman, Philip Johnson, and Michael Graves. And when I did uh, this drawing, I brought it up to Peter Eisenman. He signed this, and he started to talk to Philip Johnson, and Philip Johnson signed this. And Johnson said, I really like that drawing. And then I went to Michael Graves, and I said, would you sign it? And he said, no. <laughs> he said, no. Uh, and I said, why? And he said, because I don't like those two. <laughs> So this is about patience. This story is about patience. Um, Michael Graves, as many of you know, uh, is now confined to a wheelchair. And so 25 years later, one of my best friends was writing a story about him at his residence. And she brought this sketch to him with a note from me explaining and trying to remind him, him about what happened. And this time, he signed it. <laughs> and so she sent it back to me. 
So this is by my desk. I look at this and I think about where I've been and where I'm going. Uh, and so this is Lightroom. This is the Decatur Square. Here's Decatur High School. This is the site of the first project that I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you three projects and uh, talk to you a little bit about their ideas. So the idea of Lightroom was to create a completely sustainable building that uh, uses vernacular materials. So I mentioned the block is uh, recycled from the old stadium. It also uses uh, Georgia pine and Georgia cypress. And so uh, th that is a wood that I really love working with uh, that is grown as in a sustainable forest. And then it has Tennessee maple floors. So this is the ground level of Lightroom right here, the car park and the entry courtyard and this beautiful tree. This is the studio with the framed view out to the historic residence in the Decatur Square.